Okay, welcome everybody. Um, tonight's training session, the Monday night training, is on the art of the cold call. So um, I'm going to run through this presentation and then do some questions at the end. Um, but what I, my goal of this is to make sure that everyone who's on this is really comfortable with reaching out to someone um, in regards to the opportunity to be an ambassador with Plexus or be a customer and you actually initializing the first step versus uh, weighing on someone to ask you about Plexus. So let's start with a really simple definition. What is a cold call? Cold calling is defined as the solicitation of business from a potential customers from potential customers who have had no prior contact with the salesperson conducting the call. Cold calling is used to attempt to convince potential customers to purchase either the salesperson's product or service. So that is the standard definition of a cold call. So I've highlighted here something. Had no prior contact with the salesperson. So if we think about that and what that means for us, because we're contacting our friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, kids connections, and service organizations, people that we have connection with, we are not cold calling. So this normal fear and worry of rejection that we typically face or, or have does not apply to us. We are not salespeople. We are share people because what we're doing is we are sharing the opportunity the ability to get um, better health through Plexus to our friends, family, and acquaintances. So that's where I want to start this conversation, this idea of is that a cold call is not that. It's, um, there are cold calls in business um, where you are literally reaching out to a complete stranger you've had no contact with um, and getting them to move forward on uh, a purchase, an order, an appointment, etc., And we can still do that in Plexus, but that's truly a cold call. If I'm reaching out to Virginia for the first time to share Plexus, I, I've had experience with Virginia. I've known her for 15 years through different circles and relationships, so it's not a cold call, right? So we need to reverse that thinking in our minds. Okay. So let me tell you the seven keys to good sharing. Remember, we're not selling, we're sharing. So we're not doing cold calls and we're not selling, we're now sharing. The first is to master your 30 second elevator pitch. And so an example of that is quite simply when someone says to you, so what do you do? Well, um, my 30 second elevator pitch looks like this or sounds like this. Well, I'm in the energy business, but my passion is plexus. I pause. The next question out of the person's mouth is, what is Plexus? My response is my 30-second pitch. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Plexus is a health and wellness company that focuses on gut health with a full line of products that help you get healthy from the inside out. Subsequent, some of the, the benefits of the products um, for me personally have been, uh, I've, I've gotten off of uh, having to use orthotics for implantar fasciitis. I've lost 20 pounds and inches, and I feel fantastic. And I've never been uh, in the shape that I am uh, today. That's what Plexus is and what it does for me. Mastering that 30 second elevator pitch. Number two, you want to develop a strategy for your Frank's list. So, one one A would be that you actually you you create your Frank's list. And again, to recap. That's making a list of 120 names that are friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, kids' connections, and service organizations. Just people that you know that are not currently a part of Plexus as a customer or an ambassador. Make no prejudgments. Um, well, that person's really skinny, so I don't think they'd, they'd really benefit from Plexus. Um, because number one, you don't know what their health concerns are. And number two, you're assuming they have no family and friends in their circle of influence that need the products or services. Okay, so, so you wanna develop a strategy for your Frank's list. Are you gonna call them? Are you going to email them? Are you gonna text these people? 
what's a strategy that you feel comfortable with that you can be most effective with? And when I say most effective, we want to try and get one out of six of those people to say yes to the opportunity. So knowing your personality and what you're comfortable with and then stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit and pushing beyond what, what you think you could do, what's your strategy going to be? Number three is execute on that strategy. And I've written down here, ready, fire, aim, right? Now the phrase is ready, aim, fire. But when you're executing on a strategy, you get yourself ready with your list and then you start um, reaching out and making those connections via phone or text or messaging. And then after a few calls or contacts, you might adjust your strategy. So that's the aim. So it's ready, start going, fire, and then adjust your sights and keep firing. Number four, always start with the end in mind. So again, I'll, I'll use Virginia as an example. If I'm going to make a phone call, a warm call to Virginia to introduce her to the opportunity, I need to, before I make that call, know what my end is in mind. What do I want to accomplish on this call? You know, if I reach out to Sherilyn, it's the first time. Is my goal of that call to get her to agree to an appointment to talk to me about Plexus further in detail? Well, when I go in, that's what my mind is set on. I'm going in with the end in mind. What is my goal of reaching out? Okay, so always start with the end in mind. Number five, be prepared to handle objections by welcoming, overcoming, and closing. This is a big thing for me, and I want you all to master this skill because it's so important. What, you are going to face objections. I can't afford it. I don't have the time. Um, you know what, I'm just not interested. Those are objections and they're very common. A technique that I've learned and I teach is just simply called welcome, overcome, and close. So I'm using Sherilyn's ex example again. Sherilyn says to me, you know what, I'm just too busy, I don't have the time. The most important step in those three is welcome. It's the first one. And a welcome step is quite simply this. Sherilyn, I can appreciate what you're saying. Sherilyn, I hear you. Sherilyn, I know exactly how you feel. What that does is it lets Sherilyn know that I'm listening to her, that she's been heard. If you skip that first step and you just start overcoming and trying to uh, overcome her objection, then immediately a wall goes up that says, Phil does not care about me. He simply just wants a sale. And we, don't, we always said at the beginning, we're not salespeople, we're share people. So you have to welcome her objection first. Then you overcome and close. So the last, the first and the last step are the most important. The middle is just filler, okay? You literally could say a bunch of crazy words that don't mean a lot. But if you're empathetic, and then if you say at the end, so Sherilyn, what do you think? Maybe we could give this a shot? That's what you have to do. You've got to close the end. So welcome, overcome, close. Now, how do you get good at that? you got to practice. I always recommend using a significant other uh, or a close accountability partner or anyone that's willing to listen to you and will give you constructive feedback. Um, it's a good skill to develop because you can use it not only in Plexus, but you can use it in life. You can use it with your kids. You know what, Riley? I appreciate that you want to have $20 to go to the movies. However, you did not do this, this, and this, and this. So honestly, I think you're going to stay home tonight. So again, it's a good technique to use in all areas of life. Practice it. Number six, someone is always being sold. It's either going to be you or them. So what this means is, just an example where you Sherilyn and saying she didn't have enough time. I can choose to believe her. There's a difference between being empathetic and belief. So I could choose to believe her, and now I, I come back to uh, Jen, and I said, you know, Jen, Sherilyn was really interested, I think, but she's just so busy. She doesn't have any time, and I totally understand that, and I'm just, yeah, she's so overwhelmed. Okay, so in that exchange, she sold me. I didn't sell her on the fact that if she's really busy, if she can find three hours a week, she can turn this into $3,000 a, a month in income. That would be me selling her. 
So again, number six, someone's always being sold. Think about that. It doesn't just relate to Plexus, but in life, there's always this exchange. So are you doing the sharing and the convincing, or are you being convinced? You have to think about that one. And the last one, the good sharing. Be bold, be passionate, be enthusiastic, and my number one thing is don't throw up on your customers. So what I mean by that is, you know, um, I can just relate all sorts of facts and information to where I'm literally throwing them up on you. And if you think of the visual, just imagine the person that you're talking to who's never heard of Plexus. They've known you because you met them in high school 20 years ago, and now you're just vomiting gut health and candida and all these other things that we just tend to hear all, every day, all day long, and they've never heard of, and they're just sitting there with a pile of throw up in their lap, and they don't want to do anything other than run. So it's great to be bold. It's great to be passionate and enthusiastic because people want to follow those kinds of individuals. Just be careful not to throw up so information, uh, information on them. They don't know what to do with all that vomit in their lap. So it's a great visual. Just remember that when you start feeling like you're sharing too much. Okay, moving on. And again, at the end here, I'll open it up for questions. So the good mechanics of sharing. Number one is be relatable and treat everyone the same differently. So again, I'll, I'm, I'm using Virginia and Cheryl. Um, what uh, Virginia can relate to is not going to be necessarily what Sherilyn can relate to. I have the same message and the same facts and the same information I want to share, but I might tailor it differently to my audience and who I'm talking to. So, for example, um, whether it's not even as simple as, uh, well, Virginia just wants to be in the business opportunity and Sherilyn is really about the details and how the products work. It's more of their personalities and understanding what interests them and what kinds of things um, and how I'm sharing it um, so that they can actually hear me and understand me. Number two is use the donut technique. And I'll show you an example here on the next slide to make your connection personal. And again, I'll show you that here in a second. And the last, uh, in terms of good mechanics, is use powerful words. So you're going to hear me say a lot, um, hey, Tim, can we share five minutes together? I don't ever say, hey, Tim, can we take five minutes to um, talk about this opportunity? Because what happens is there's a, um, something that clicks mentally with Tim when I say, can I take five minutes? Because now... His time has become more important than my time. So from a selling standpoint, he now um, is on a different level and he's looking down on me versus <laughs> me looking up on him just from one simple word, which was take instead of share. But think about, the, think about it this way. If I set an appointment with Sherilyn to talk about the opportunity – it's going to be her five minutes and it's going to be my five minutes as well. And my five minutes are just as important. So I want to share that time. Um, you also want to use things instead of like, you know, uh, I think this may be sort of a good opportunity. You want to say, I know this is an amazing opportunity. So think versus no is another one. There's these little subtle words that if you exchange them for more powerful words, make a big difference okay so let me teach you all the donut technique and it's very simple it consists of an introduction a point of interest with your contact and then a close for the next step so i'll read this and this is i'm reaching out to jen hey jen and this could be a, a text message it could be a facebook message it could be a phone conversation it's so good to connect with you after not seeing you since high school I just saw on Facebook that you're starting to take yoga classes with your pet Cobra. That's <laughs> I too started a brave new adventure, Plexus, and I want to share five minutes with you just to let you know what it's doing for me. When would be a good time to chat? Tuesday or Thursday of this week. That's but cool. notice I start with the end in mind. My goal is I want to meet with him face to face and share the opportunity. I did something relatable in the beginning, 
And I, I was specifically to them, hey, I saw that you're taking a yoga class with a cobra. It doesn't really matter what the relation, that the point I made of that is, it's, it's not necessarily the fact that you're relating something specific to plexus or specific to health. You're just saying, I noticed you and I noticed what you're doing and I found it interesting. People want to hear that they are interesting and they are important and that they are heard and seen. And when you recognize people on that level, it opens them up to um, opportunity. So this is a, a technique that's been used for years and years and years. It's proven and tested. And more importantly, it's sincere. Um, if you notice that um, your person that you're reaching out to was actually posting about a relative who's not feeling well or doing, you know, doing poorly, you could say, I know we haven't connected since high school. I just read about your aunt Sally and her troubles with um, diabetes. This is something that's very near and dear to me um, as I've been starting on a, a journey with Plex. And I would love to share five minutes with you and her. When would be a good time to get together? Tuesday or Thursday of this week. The last thing I'll point out on this technique is notice at the end that I give people what's called um, a choice close. So notice that one of the choices is um, not to get together. It's I'm giving them a choice of which is better for you Tuesday or Thursday. I'm not giving them the alternative choice of you can't get together with me or do you want to or not want to. It's just which day is better. Um, it, again, these are brain techniques that people signal, okay, well, I don't know. Actually, Thursday probably is better. They're not even thinking about, do I really want to meet with this person? It's now, a, oh, well, they give me a choice. Which is better, Tuesday or Thursday? Okay. Moving on to uh, one of our last slides. And this is the critical one. And that is just do it. The biggest fear that we have is that of rejection. So I want you to think of it this way. If it takes six no's to get to one yes, then with every no, you are that much closer to a yes. So if you work on creating a Frank's list that has 120 names on it, that means you have no less than 20 ambassadors waiting to join your team. Again, the math is really simple. And this is standardized across many different industries and sales types that on average, it's six no's to get to a yes. So if you simply create the list and then reach out using the techniques that we're talking about, that one out of seven appointments or discussions or conversations will lead to someone new joining your team and changing their lives and then be able to replicate that and do the same, you're gonna have 20 new people join your team. And if you do this over the next week to two weeks, it can happen this month. Now, I don't want to tell you um, or focus specifically on you and be selfish and say that that would take someone who's starting um, today and turn them into a gold ambassador in 30 days, but it would. And we know that all the financial benefits and all the other things that come with them. But if I told you that having 20 people join your team right now and all you had to do was pick up the phone for a few minutes a day, would you do it? Uh, I know I would, but I know I have, and I hope you will. So I rambled on for a few minutes. I've given you all hopefully a good piece of me. What questions do we have? And I'm gonna go back to, um, I'll put it back on uh, my screen here, one second. There we go. So, questions, comments, concerns. You can unmute yourself and ask. Um, can you hear me? I can, yes. I just lost your picture. Um, why the heck is it called the donut? Um, the donut technique? Oh, I are. Can you still yeah. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Why is it called the donut? Why is it called the donut whatever? So it's a dumb question, but no, it's, not, it's there's no dumb questions. Um, I know. I'm so curious. Yeah. So it's, it was called that because you're basically taking them um, from the beginning. You're filling it with some jelly in the middle and coming back around to where you want to be. It just, Got it. Yeah. The donut technique. Yeah. Did you say that and I missed it? 
No, yeah. no, okay. I didn't. Okay. But yeah, okay. that was a good detailed question. That's that's <laughs> the answer. Just take them in the circle that you want to go, and you just stuff some jelly in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? It's good. Oh. Um, I'm not somebody else, but I listened to a guy. I can't remember his name, but direct sales. And he said his goal every week was to get, I think it was 100 no's, probably after listening to you, yeah. in order to get 10 to 20 yeses. And yeah. he said every day he, he was hoping to get no's because he yeah. knew after so many to get yeses. So that's right. Keep that in mind. But hmm. it is. And here's the thing you can use sports examples, right? Um, if you hit 300, you're a Hall of Fame player in the uh, major leagues. You're going to be a Hall of Famer if you, if you bat 300, which means you get seven no's for every, uh, or seven strikeouts or outs for every 10 at bats. So you get three out of 10. We're saying do, you know, essentially two out of 10. Um, so again, it's all about, it, it's just perspective. Mm -hmm. You can't be afraid of the nose. You have to embrace them. Yeah. Um, and if you're not running one out of five or one out of six, and you're maybe running one out of ten, then there's something there that you're either sharing that uh, needs to be tweaked and how you're sharing it, and we can work on that. Um, but you should run one out of six, and if you're not, we can figure out what, you're, what you are saying that's maybe not um, attracting the people that you want to to join your team. That's good. Lori, you were going to say something, I think, and you were muted. So let's see if you're if it's working. No, nope, still not working. Okay. Um, anyone else? Yeah. Yes. There we go. Uh, for Lori or me? Uh, Virginia, go ahead. I was just going to say that a uh, technique that I used to use is when I was making those calls and I knew I was going to get a lot of no's, mm -hmm. I always saved the one that I thought was probably going to be a yes for the end. So I would kind of end my day mm -hmm. on a yes. So that helps to motivate you to pick up that phone again because you've ended on a high. So I would save the ones that I knew were probably more of a given or more of a, a friendly um, call towards the end of the, the set number of calls I was going to make that yeah. day. That works for many people. And I, I, I used to call that the path of least resistance. Yeah. And so um, that, that's, if that works for you, that's awesome. And that's fantastic. I'm a sadist. So I, want, <laughs> I, want, I, I didn't put, I didn't matter if they were great or bad. I just give me the names and let's get after it. My wife is probably, she's over my shoulder getting ready to start her training here in five minutes. And uh, she would probably be the opposite. She'd probably do the same thing. So it's good. It's good. Hey, whatever works, just make the calls and reach out. Right. Okay. Any other questions? The good ones. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you all. I love the that we got so many great leaders on this. Um, hopefully, this is. I'll put this up on the uh, leaders page when we're done. The link. Um, so you can share it with anyone else in your team that's wanting to develop their cold call skills. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Everyone have a great night. Thank Thanks so much. Oh, hold on one second. I think we got a chat. Uh, awesome. Lori says that she used the elevator speech on Saturday night at a party and it worked like a charm. Love it. Great. Develop it. Uh, make sure it's just part of your vocabulary because, uh, you never get a second chance to make a first impression, so you want it to be a good one. All right, so on that, we will say bid everyone adieu and have a great night.